Okay, here are the numbers for 2014. Now notice that these are numbers up until first week of December, but we can take from it about what it's going to finish at for 2014. I'll try to get the real numbers uh, for the close, the final ones, next month as uh, they come in finalized. But palladium up, gold's going to finish about even, platinum and silver are going to finish down for the year. Numismatics, we see that uh, they're, they're pretty strong. Uh, Morgan dollars down 20%. That is a, a little bit surprising to me. U.S. dollars versus foreign currencies. The only one here that I want you to pay closer attention to is the Chinese yuan because in the last couple of weeks it's really moved weaker against the U.S. dollar by, by quite a lot. So that number is going to be off. Hong Kong dollar, of course, is flat because it's, it's a peg, a straight peg to the U.S. dollar. It never changes from 7.75. And uh, I'm not sure if it will ever float, but that's the way it is. Wholesale food commodities, this is one that affects you the most. Obviously, eggs up big since last year. Butter, beef, hogs, so your pork there, uh, flour. Those are all the meat prices. They're much higher than they were last year. That shows the inflation hitting you the hardest. And you know when you go to the grocery store and you talk to your butcher that uh, these prices reflect uh, the real economy, the Main Street economy, and show that inflation is raging in energy. Uh, not so much recently because of the whole uh, shale oil and the overproduction of crude oil. But other than that, uh, we can see that food is, is uh, kind of misleading, you know, because you see corn, you see cheddar cheese, oats, soybeans, and things like that that are weaker than they were a year ago. And we know that uh, a lot of food production and food transportation is locked in with the price of energy, okay? Um, the price of energy affects so many things because of how things are made and how things are transported logistically. But if you look at these numbers and you do the research, you'll find that inflation, deflation, and stagflation all happen at the same time. It's not just one or the other. Okay, there are elements of all three types of environments going on, tugging on each other. So you can give many examples of inflation, many examples of deflation and stagflation, and you could all be right and you could all be wrong at the same time. That's why... Um, like I said, no two economists are right and no two economists agree with each other. So there's no point in really listening to them. <laughs> okay, let's take a look at how much in precious metals you should have on reserve for your savings compared to what it may have been years ago. Conservatively, uh, invest, investment uh, professionals will tell you to put 10% to 20%. 15% also is uh, recommended quite often if you listen uh, to your investment advisor. But um, aggressive up to 33%, I would say that even higher than that because after all, we're stackers, right? And I know some of you have 50% or even more. Uh, some of you have, have commented on your videos and blogs that you have uh, up to 100% of your savings in precious metals. And normally, we could say that that wouldn't be such a wise choice, but in this environment, you never know. Conventional wisdom is out the window, and we won't know if your 100% uh, investment in precious metals is going to be a good call until we have hindsight. Hindsight's always 2020. Um, here's a conservative model for gold, silver, and rare coins, and you can see here that rare coins um, have really jumped up. Uh, recently, as the price of precious metals have gone down, rare coins have held their ground or increased in value over that time period. So it's a good idea to have numismatics in your stack to help hedge within your precious metal stack. So you have hedges within your hedge, and uh, that can help you in the long run to have uh, bullion and numismatic rare coins together. And you'll um, either have long holds, medium to short term holds, or flips within that whole stack of um, uh, various coins and bars and ingots and such that you have. So um, uh, over the month, uh, gold range and net change, there's the figures right there. The ratios I really don't pay too much attention to, but right there they are for you. And those will finish about the same 
um, as we go into 2015. These are not the finalized numbers, like I said, but they're pretty close to what it's going to finish at because there's not a lot of action, really, um, during the holiday uh, season within that week, week and a half, two weeks. The markets are fairly quiet because people uh, obviously are thinking about the holidays and getting out of um, their jobs and on to something else such as uh, leisure. Okay, leisure. So, um, happy holidays, and those are the numbers. We'll see what happens next year, but you can be sure for one thing that's going to be volatile because we are in unprecedented times. May you live in interesting times, and these are certainly it. So, that's it.